Hello and welcome to Telecom TV. I'm Martin Warwick and I'm talking with Sawa Raza, who is the Vice President Product Management NFV at Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Sawa, great to see you again. I'd like to chat to you slightly differently than we did last time. I'd like to talk about a product in particular, a sort of product spotlight, if you will. And I'd like to ask, begin by asking you this. NFV System 1.2 1.2 is being released this coming January and it's an updated and improved version of Hewlett Packard Enterprises existing NFV kits. Um, why the need for a change? Well, uh, first of all, thank you for having me. Uh, you know, we have made several improvements to the product, uh, not just in terms of features and capabilities, uh, but also in the way the product is uh, ordered uh, and, and managed and supported. Uh, this is an evolution. You know, NFV is a fairly uh, rapidly progressing uh, 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 initiative at service providers as well as on the vendor side. Mm. And so we're responding mostly to uh, customer and field requests uh, for enhancement requests. Uh, NFV system, as you know, is meant to be a turnkey solution turnkey but standards based. Uh, the core tenets are it's got to be easy to easy to buy and order, easy to manage, easy to support, and easy to deploy. Uh, and so with all of those things in mind, uh, with every, uh, every iteration of the product, we make improvements not just across uh, you know, form factors and, and, and density and, and more options, uh, more options for uh, for for solutions, but also for uh, you know the way the the product is configured, the the various pieces that come together. Uh, we update the software components. So this particular version, for example, will ship with the newest version, Helium uh, Helium Carrier Grade OpenStack version 2.0, that brings a lot of new uh, virtualization and performance features for carrier VNFs, as well as an improved lifecycle manager for the system itself. So, uh, you know, we will continue to make investments and uh, improvements to the product. Um, and, uh, you know, we're hoping uh, that the uptake on this will be as positive as uh, we had on the last version. So, uh, I was interested to hear you say that you're taking a lot of information and requests and from actual users and your customers and so on, which you feed into the iterative system, which you also add to yourselves to produce the next version. Is that correct? Yeah, that, that's exactly right. I mean, you know, the, the concept around NFP system has been to allow carriers to uh, accelerate and de-risk their NFP deployments. Mm -hmm. So, as we go into proof of concepts and trials and deployments, uh, they're learning and we're learning. Uh, some of it is, you know, system sizing. Some of it is around how they actually want to deploy and turn up and turn on and manage. Um, you know, uh, one of the one of the core value adds uh, of uh, of taking the NFE system approach to to building your uh, your NFE uh, your NFE infrastructure is that we provide, you know, really a, a almost a white glove service, right? It's it's factory integrated. You order what you want and it ships from the factory completely pre-cabled, pre-integrated, show up, plug it in, you're ready to start deploying your applications. And uh, in that process, of course, you know, we've had, uh, we've had customers who have uh, given us great feedback in terms of how to streamline. Um, we've gotten great feedback in terms of how they're sizing their deployments, right? Some folks want fairly large systems, some folks want fairly small ones. Mm. Uh, and so we're taking all of those and uh, are able to incorporate them into into the subsequent ver versions. Okay, so I get the way the system works. So what changes have you made this time around? Well, one of the main uh, changes we've made for this version is uh, introducing the newest version of uh, our carrier grade OpenStack. So Helium carrier grade 2.0 uh, OpenStack is are now shipping natively with the system. And it allows for you know, greater performance, greater scale. The other uh, change on the software side has been that uh, we have decided to offer what we're calling a black box system, 
in that uh, we've taken uh, we've taken some steps to ensure that there are no third party licensing requirements for end users so they don't have to go and purchase third party hypervisors or databases etc as uh, as part of uh, you know building out an NFP system uh, we've replaced them with open source components uh, and uh, that again is an example of something that was a specific ask from from several customers who said hey you made the ordering you've made the ordering process really easy you've uh, you've given us a great product however you know it turns out this piece is virtualized and I still need to go get a hypervisor license from somebody else. Uh, and they can get it from us too, mm. uh, but you know, different companies operate different ways. So anyway, what we've done is uh, now provided a solution that is entirely HP owned uh, and uh, you know, all the components are either open source or, or HP products. So again, uh, that was uh, an example of, of something that we were able to address for customers in a very, a very short period of time because we use open standards, open interfaces. Let's stay on that for a minute, the open standards and open interfaces. I was interested also in what you said a few minutes ago about open but standards-based and so on. Is that not a contradiction in terms in itself? I don't think so. Um, if you look at what telcos are, are looking for, um, they are looking for interoperability, right? And the ability to swap out uh, different uh, parts of the architecture for best of breed components. Right now, if you happen to be a vendor that had that has best of breed components in pretty much every layer of the stack, you know that's that's what we're doing. Right, uh, we're still giving you standard x86 servers. We're giving you standard Ethernet switches. We're giving you, you know, standards compliant OpenStack, uh, and you know, just because it's uh, it's uh, it's all coming from from one vendor doesn't mean it's not open. Right? So I think there's uh, uh, there's there's huge value in promoting open interfaces, open standards. Right? Customers will make their choices about which uh, uh, which components they want at uh, from which vendor uh, at what le at what level of the stack. You're a good guy to interview, Soma, because you always lead me into nicely into my next question. You, you mentioned value there, which is the very next thing I was going to say. So you've got the, you've got the system to make the iterations, you're making the changes, um, and we can see why. Now, what does the, what's the value to your customers from that? What do they get from the deal? Sure. Uh, as I've mentioned uh, earlier, the systems-based approach we've taken makes the system, makes the the buying, the management, the support, and the deployment experience uh, easy uh, right right from the onset on through day zero and, 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 and onwards through the life cycle of the product. Uh, it allows customers to focus on what they do best versus manage components uh, and you know the life cycle of those components. Uh, also, the way the system is, is constructed, uh, we provide a, a very modular way to incrementally add capacity. Uh, you know, you, you start off with the Hewlett Packard Enterprise NFV system starter kit, uh, which provides you a set amount of storage computer network capacity. Uh, and for incremental workloads, depending on the kind of application, you can either add just more compute capacity via an additional compute kit or a partial compute kit, or, you know, storage capacity. In some cases, you may want to ex expand the uh, the control plane capacity, and we also offer a control plane kit for that. So again, thinking about this as a solution, as opposed to you know uh, a, a piece of parts that you cobble together day one, and then now have to figure out, you know, I need to add ten percent capacity or fifty percent capacity. If it wasn't designed from the uh, from scratch to be able to handle that you're likely to have a fairly hard time doing it. Uh, so, so again, lots, lots of value in, in the approach here. Thanks, Salva. Well, now, a last question to you. You're looking at NFV system 1.2. I take it there will be other systems. So looking forward, what's going to happen next? Year? We will continue to evolve the system uh, to keep up with the innovations in server storage networking coming out of our other business units. So you will definitely see us make sure that our NFV customers 
have access to the latest generations of products. In addition to that, uh, we're looking at uh, several new form factors for the NFV system, and that's to facilitate uh, HPE customers who have a need to deploy uh, less compute intensive uh, solutions or want to start off small and then and then grow from there. Uh, there's a lot of work going on uh, on the software side. So as we continue to evolve our carrier grade OpenStack solution, we will be updating NFV system as well to keep up. So yes, I, uh, I, I fully anticipate that uh, you know, we will, uh, we will be uh, making a lot of improvements to the system uh, over the course of the year and, and years to come. Okay, well, for the next iteration, let's hope we're together again and we can talk about it once more. That was interesting. Uh, Sawa Raza, thank you very much indeed. Thank you so much.